I truly, honestly believe if it wasn't for the pills that I'm taking, I would my life would have been done a long time ago. You think you may have? Oh, absolutely. Would you have, I would have taken my life else. Absolutely. You would have killed yourself. Absolutely. Mental disability is a, is a huge thing. It's uh, it's uh, it's it's got me crippled. The profession of an MMA fighter, especially a professional and outstanding one, is considered prestigious and respected in society since a person achieves success in a craft that not everyone can master and excel in. However, for all its merits, it exacts an immensely high price, and today we will delve a bit deeper into that. Sit back comfortably, because you are about to hear one of the most tragic stories in mixed martial arts. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, also give it a like and leave a comment in four words. Now, let's get started. Very good striking technique. It shows that you can see that he competed in K1. So, decent striking skills, fast hands, strong strike and good wrestling technique. It is also evident from the pride fights, a very good fighter. If you don't know our protagonist today, let's introduce him. And if you do, just welcome him. Gary Henry Goodridge was born on January the 17th, 1966 in Port of Spain, the capital of the Caribbean nation of Trinidad and Tobago. Goodridge's childhood was not particularly remarkable, except that like many children of his age, he was excessively active from an early age. After some time, he moved to Canada and settled in the city of Barry, located in the province of Ontario. Sports were never alien to young Gary, who mother nature endowed with dimensions and a bright charisma. Until a certain point, bodybuilding interested him. Later, he turned his gaze to arm wrestling, in which he quite succeeded. The title of the Canadian champion speaks for itself. His unique approach to training helped Goodridge strengthen his arms to the point where he often tied his opponents not with technique, but with a rough bear hug. You bring a lot of rage into the ring occasionally. Why is that? Well, that's just my style. That you know, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do. I, I you know, I want to mangle people up. I want to twist them around and, and do all sorts of nasty things to them, and uh, it just shows in the ring. However, his most significant achievement in arm wrestling is considered defeating the icon of the industry, American John Brzenk. Sensing that he hit a ceiling in the direction he chose, Goodrich decided to go further. When his age was well over 20, he worked as a welder at Honda but dreamed for more. The idea of getting into martial arts had been enticing him for a long time. Only life circumstances in the form of the search for ways to make a living hindered him. Initially, Henry started with boxing. He practiced it for several years and even managed to enter the Canadian amateur team, among whom he became the undisputed champion at one point. Soon after that, Goodrich became interested in the MMA acronym which looked like the most promising option. You'll be surprised, but our hero started his professional journey incredibly simply. On the advice of his friends, he called the hotline of the nascent UFC and expressed a desire to perform at one of their tournaments. Remember that at that time, he had only a couple of years of amateur boxing experience, size and physical strength. He hadn't even started training in mixed martial arts. One of the promotion's managers, Art Davey, answered the phone and surprisingly accepted Goodridge's offer. The point is, he knew Gary's name because he himself was interested in arm wrestling and remembered his performances. However, not everything was so simple. Even in those days, you couldn't debut without any experience in professionals, coming basically from nowhere. Therefore, Henry began training at the Korean martial arts school Cook saw one to get the necessary martial arts certificates because his boxing experience was not enough. It was precisely in that school where he gave another contender for a contract with the future strongest league a run for his money, thereby getting the opportunity to perform at a full-fledged tournament. After just a month of training, he was already given a black belt with the condition that Goodridge would represent this school in the UFC. Such was the uncomplicated advertising. The same friends who pushed Gary into no-holds-barred fights came up with a nickname for him, Big Daddy. However, we remembered his nickname without the last word because Goodridge himself decided not to add it. Here, uh, with Paul Menhas, my uh, it says Marco Ross. Gary's been training here with us since, uh, since Prime 3, Prime 4. 
showed a lot of improvement. He's been trained by a lot of different people. But most of his training could have been back here. I just have to vouch for him, but he does train very, very hard. He does deserve to be where he is right now. With all the hard work I see him go through and all the injury, he's done very well. The debut of the huge and powerful prospect at the age of 30 took place at UFC 8 in 1996. Since then, he began fighting everywhere possible until 2010, including both completely unknown organizations and the most advanced ones at that time. Let's put it this way, Big Daddy Pimp endeared himself to the audience of that era almost from the very beginning. Viewers were hungry for spectacles and Goodridge was their main supplier. Starting from the fact that his appearance alone attracted everyone who wanted to spend the weekend watching bloody battles in some one-night-only organization, Gary also delivered a spectacular show in his actual fights, sparing neither himself nor his opponents. His popularity in the early 2000s increased to the point that he managed to spend several years of his career in the famous and ruthless pride where the Japanese celebrated every time the fighter entered the ring for another presentation. In his prime, referring to the years when his record had more wins than losses, our hero shared the mats with many stars and renowned veterans of the sport. For example, he has a knockout victory over Oleg Taktarov, who once held a UFC belt, and losses to two of the strongest fighters in the CIS space, Igor Vovchanchin and Fedor Emelianenko. I always wanted to fight in Canada, period, and uh, I was offered a time to fight in Canada um, a while in, uh, in Edmonton, and I was excited to fight in Edmonton, but uh, I have a problem that, uh, that just wasn't getting better, and I, I needed to take a rest at the time that, that, that I had scheduled the fight in Edmonton, and uh, now I, 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 I'm, I'm good. And Iroquois made, uh, I was in negotiation with these people probably about two months. And uh, we feel good, I feel good, I feel like I'm being respected and treated good. In short, thanks to his appearance, the desire to make good money and the readiness to go to any lengths for it, he stayed afloat for quite a long time. Even when losses in his record piled up over the years, people continued to buy tickets to shows featuring Goodrich because they knew he would never disappoint. Alongside mixed martial arts, Henry also attended professional kickboxing events where he began to perform only from 1999 to 2010. Overall, he also succeeded in terms of career advancement here as the lion's share of his path fell on the K1 organization, not the least in this direction. However, performing solely for the entertainment of the public without worrying about his own health regularly received heavy head blows for more than a decade. Big Daddy Pimped earned himself significant problems precisely after hanging up the gloves. Uh, there was always a, a desire within me to be something more than just your run-of-the-mill uh, electrician. Not that there's anything wrong with electricians. I just wanted to be something more than that. And I, I always aspired to be more. Um, so um, so the, when the chance came up, the UFC, UFC came up while I was working at the time at, at Honda of Kinder Manufacturing. Uh, a job came up, uh, so UFC was looking for somebody and I could get into UFC 8 and I jumped out of the chance and I was in. Next thing you know, I was in. For your understanding, Gary Goodridge's professional kickboxing statistics include 12 wins and 24 losses, with the majority ending in premature, brutal and cruel fashion. He retired from kickboxing in November after a streak of 12 consecutive losses. In MMA, his record stands at 23 wins to 22 losses, with only four losses coming by way of judges' decision. Unfortunately, his last seven fights ended without a chance for him. Intensive performances with minimal experience and skills led to a rather dismal outcome for Goodrich shortly after retiring. In 2012, doctors diagnosed Big Daddy with degenerative dementia a condition regularly accompanied by memory problems, speech impairments, and excruciating headaches. My days suck, probably given a little bit of a depression. I could get a job, but I'd forget I had the job. It doesn't get better. This is the best that you will be. Good boy. Now, the 57-year-old veteran's existence depends entirely on medication. His daily routine is bedridden, and the powerful hands that once folded arm wrestling icons and professional fighters reach out for pills that need to be taken regularly. 
His medication regime aligns with that of Alzheimer's patients, and this is not a coincidence. After 86 professional fights in kickboxing and MMA, Woodridge sometimes feels much older than he really is. It happens so gradually, you don't even really know. Um, people had to point it out to me. Yeah, wow, we just said that a couple of minutes ago. And that, that started to happen about uh, three years ago. But um, I'd say that how it goes back further than that. This is the main downside of this industry. Besides the glamour of combat sports, the harsh reality becomes increasingly apparent. In mixed martial arts, along with other contact sports, frequent head strikes cause irreversible brain damage. The first generation of MMA stars competing in a period without specific regulations concerning athletes' health suffered greatly. Kickboxing, with its numerous focused hits, is more dangerous than commonly believed. Today, there are fighters who switch between these two sports, just like Goodrich did. He is not the only one who lost his health. Goodrich is simply one of the latest and most prominent examples on the growing list of retired athletes from combat sports suffering from degenerative brain diseases. If he was going to continue fighting, he better save his money because the money goes away really quick. Um, everybody that I know of right now that I fought in time when I fought were all damaged. Um, everybody that I know. Um, they're all damaged. I got brain injury. Um, people I know replaced their shoulders. I'm waiting for two replace. They got to replace both my shoulders right now as well. Thankfully, I live in Canada. I don't have to pay that out of my ass. Um, oh, sorry. Pardon my French. Goodridge's career is remarkable in that even in his last years, there were no guarantees. He competed until December 2010, earning money from promoters eager to attract a big name to their shows quickly even if it meant ignoring clear signs of cognitive decline. His close circle claimed that his speech, memory and coordination had been steadily deteriorating since 2006. Currently, Gary Goodridge continues to live in Canada with his family and tries to stay active. He is fortunate to have a loving family that, despite everything, continues to support him in these difficult circumstances. At times, he forgets the way home when walking his dog. Nevertheless, Despite everything, our hero still visits sports halls, assists in training young fighters, and shares his accumulated experience. So as you can see, I went over a lot of um, a lot of sports. Yeah, Most yeah, of yeah. my sports are striking and then arm wrestling was, uh, was strength. Um, so um, yeah, I, I was always a sports person. I love... Uh... Share your opinion in the comments under this video. Express your thoughts on Gary Goodrich and his career in the fighting industry. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss new videos. And of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. See you soon.